Hello, tubers. This is Kurt with Edibles and Exotics coming to you from sunny Mesa, Arizona. And in today's episode, we're going to nurse this Shangri-La Mulberry back to health. So a little history on this guy. Uh, I'm at my daughter's house. We're in Mesa. And uh, I gave this to my daughter and my son-in-law about two years ago. Um, it was March of 2022. So it's been on the ground through two summers. And as you can see, um, it's probably... Uh, Two and a half feet tall and uh, got three branches. It's got berries on it, but they're small berries. Um, this thing uh, really has not grown very much. Uh, I'm going to do a little cutaway here and show you my Shangri-La mulberry. They were planted exactly the same time from the exact same batch of cuttings. My tree is probably somewhere between 20 and 25 feet tall and about 10 to 12 feet wide. Um, it's got a four inch trunk at the base. Um, and it's absolutely covered with fruit. I've done multiple cuttings, air layers, all sorts of stuff off of it. Uh, and it's still pretty big. So back to this tree. Um, this tree, let me get you in here and show you exactly uh, how this tree is living. All right, so this is the base of the tree here. It's, uh, this is the original cutting right here. That part has died and it's in the meantime grown out. It is planted in this crushed rock, all right, typical Arizona yard. Um, the soil has not really been amended except for the hole that it was planted in. Um, it's staked to hold it up because we do get wind storms, but it is out here basically just in native soil surrounded by rock. Um, it's got these little, people call them bubblers, but it's basically just a drip head, all right? It's not spraying or anything. Um, so it's planted, you can see, next to this block wall. It's in between this bush and this bush. Here's the pool, all right? The sun is setting right there, all right? So that's west. That's east. So it gets pretty full sun exposure all day, which it needs. But in the two years since it's been growing here, it hasn't really grown much at all. All right, this thing, it should be as big as my tree, if not bigger, because it's getting probably way more sun than my yard does. So what we're going to do today is we're going to rake all these crushed rocks away and we're going to fill the hole with Garden Time El Toro composted cow poop. This is not steer manure, it's cow poop. Cows are fed a different diet than steer. Uh, cow poop is lower in nitrogen so it has a less of a tendency to burn plants. Um, this stuff is mixed with uh, probably wood chips, sawdust, straw, hay, whatever. So it's not straight cow poop, it's, it's actually mixed with some stuff. So it is a lot lower on the nitrogen scale. Um, a good way to test any sort of bag soil, cow poop, whatever, is give it a whiff. If it smells like ammonia, that means there's a lot of nitrogen in it and it may burn your plants if you use too much. So. If that is the case, either don't use it, use less of it, or you could spread it out on some concrete or something and let it bake in the sun for a few days until that nitrogen gas is out into the atmosphere. Um, and then you can go ahead and use it and you'll be safe. But mulberries love nitrogen, so we're gonna use this stuff. Um, like I said, this is uh, kind of dished where it's planted. So we're gonna rake the rocks away. I'm gonna break the soil up a little bit, the native clay soil. And uh, then we're gonna mix this in and then on top of that, we're going to use some cheapo mulch. So this is, uh, you get uh, three of these, I think for like 11 bucks now at Lowe's. Um, it's brown wood chips. I don't know what kind of wood it is, probably pine or something. But uh, the dye they use to dye it, I called up the company. It's non-toxic. It's, it's a food dye. So the dye is, they said it's safe to eat. Um, it's not poisonous or whatever. They don't treat it with anything to keep it from rotting. So... It should be okay. I'd rather use arborist wood chips, um, but I just don't have time to make a batch of arborist wood chips or get a chip drop. So we're going to use this on top. So just so you guys know, I bought uh, three bags of the wood chips and three bags of the Garden Time El Toro composted deodorized cow poop. Um, and it cost me like 20 bucks at Lowe's. 
Um, that was full price, no discount, nothing like that. So I don't think we're going to use three bags each on this. We're going to use less. So we should be able to do a couple of trees with this instead of just this one. So let's get started on this. I'm going to show you guys exactly what I'm going to do here. Just a steel rake. I've moved the uh, drip lines out of the way and uh, there was a light shining on it. We got that out of the way. So super simple guys, just rake the rocks away. All right guys, so I just wanted to get in here and show you these little roots. These are from the mulberry tree. So they are growing out. So they're going all the way out to here, all right? We're only gonna probably do to about here today. I don't think we need any more right now. As time goes by, um, these roots are gonna go out um, past the drip line. The drip line is where these leaves end. So it doesn't really have much of a drip line because it doesn't really have much leaves, but you know, normally you wanna go out to here if you can a little bit further. So like I said, the roots are coming out to about here. So we're gonna leave it there. All right, so the next step is we're gonna take this mattock or some people call it a pickaxe. And we're just gonna break some of this up, trying not to damage the roots too much, because those are the feeder roots. All right, so I just broke it up a little bit just to get a little bit of uh, penetration down in there. Um, I tried not to damage roots, but I'm sure I killed a whole bunch of them. So now we're just gonna take this and dump it in. All right, we don't have to go too crazy with this. This stuff will compress over time, but we want to kind of keep it just like that. So normally with uh, trees, you got to be careful. You don't want to put soil or mulch up against the trunk, but with mulberry trees, they don't care. If you put soil or mulch against the trunk, um, it should not cause any rot. If it's a little baby, sometimes you'll wind up with isopods actually eating the cambium or the bark off of the base of it so you gotta be careful with that but this one's definitely old enough where that should not happen and i really don't think there's going to be any isopods in this area so we're okay with it um next step is dumping on the mulch that's it guys that's all you have to do so Normally when I do this with trees, I'll put down soil sulfur. I'll put down a little fertilizer. Um, the soil sulfur is gonna help lower the pH and make nutrients uh, easier for the plant to get out of the soil. All right, if your pH is too high, a lot of nutrients are gonna be locked in that soil and your plant can't uptake them. No matter how much you put down, it's stuck in the soil and it's not available to the plant. Um, so I normally do the sulfur. I didn't bring any today, so. I'm probably going to come back tomorrow and sprinkle some sulfur around here. The sulfur needs to be eaten by bacteria in the soil to be broken down and turned into sulfuric acid to help acidify the soil, thus bringing the pH down. So as of right now, there's probably not much soil life in here anyway. So if I wait a day or two, it don't matter, right? Um, sometimes I'll put down a little bit of Osmocote fertilizer just to keep things kind of balanced. Again, I didn't bring any of that, so we're not going to put any of that down. Um, there should be plenty of nitrogen in this for at least uh, two, three weeks, so we don't have to worry about that. But uh, probably in a day or two, I'll come down, I'll add the sulfur, I'll add a little bit of osmocote, um, and then another two weeks or so, I'll come down and I'll put some ammonium sulfate down. All right, these wood chips, I put these down, um, I would say probably about three or four inches thick. Um, as this settles down, I'm probably going to come back in another two, three weeks and put another bag on the top because you want about six inches to a foot. Um, four inches is good. It's going to kind of cook down. So in a couple of weeks, I could add another bag and that should bring us up to about, you know, six, seven inches and it should be fine. So if you guys have watched my other videos, you've seen, I, uh, brought my neighbor's Hong Kong orchid back to life. And that was through the heat wave we had last summer with 118 for weeks on end and above 110 for months on end. And that tree actually recovered through the heat wave. I did that video before the heat wave. 
and it recovered through the heat wave. So that just goes to show you doing something like this, um, it, it's a night and day difference. I know there's a lot of people out there that tell you uh, you could plant in unamended soil and you know just water your plants and you don't have to worry about anything. And But I'm showing you guys the reality of it, all right? You saw my tree, you saw this one, same batch, planted the same time. This one is an unamended soil. It's getting plenty of water. All right, he waters it in the summer every single day. My son-in-law does. And uh, it, it just doesn't help. You need soil life, you need living soil. So I'm gonna be doing updates on this, guys. Um, every couple of weeks, like I said, we're in springtime right now. This guy is budding out. It does have fruit, but it has not grown, okay? in two years this thing should be gigantic and it's not so i'm going to tell you guys right now in within a month or two this thing is probably going to be twice the size it's already got its roots in the ground we've treated the soil um what i am going to do also is these bubblers that he has i'm going to come over in another day or two and put some micro sprayers in so it saturates this area instead of just in one little spot because you know, if you have one here and one here, these roots are getting watered and those roots are getting watered. These roots over here and these are not. When your plant's trying to take up uh, water and food, it has to do it through drawing in moisture out of the ground. So that's moist, this is moist, this isn't, that's not. So you're only getting half of your root zone watered, all right? So we're gonna put a micro sprayer or two in and we're gonna let it sprinkle this area, keep the, the wood chips moist. It's going to keep the ground cool. It's going to help the soil life. And uh, I'm also going to bring in some fresh compost, or not so much compost, but it's going to turn into compost, kitchen scraps, that sort of stuff. And we're going to bury them under the wood chips. And I'm going to bring over some worms and isopods and springtails, and we're going to get those going in here also. So please, guys, stick around for the update on this one. You guys don't want to miss this, you know. I'm sure you've heard people online, they, you know, everyone has their own idea on how to grow things and everyone says, oh, I did this, I did that, but they don't know, uh, you know, if they did one thing and that's all they did, well, how do they know that something else isn't better? You know what I mean? So if they did an experiment where they did a tree like this in unamended ground and then they planted another one 10 feet away and amended it like this, or even better when they planted it and then compared the growth rate and everything with the same amount of water, same type of water, same everything minus, you know, except for how they prepared the ground around the plant. I guarantee you they'd see the night and day difference and they'd be like, guess what? This works better. I like doing these videos because you guys get to actually see the difference from, you know, years of neglect in crappy unamended soil, no soil life, no, no nitrogen, Plants need nitrogen, guys. That's what this is gonna this is gonna break down and, and supply the plant with nitrogen. So you guys really need to watch the updates on this. I guarantee you, you'll be blown away. Like I said, keep in mind this is two years, two summers in the ground, all right? And full sun pretty much all day, and it's teeny tiny, all right? So I have uh, some extra mulch and some extra cow poop left. So I'm gonna take you over to another tree that was planted uh, many years ago and literally hasn't grown at all. And we're gonna do the same to that. And then there's also uh, a Pakistan mulberry that they have that uh, was planted the same time as my Pakistani and it was probably uh, 20 times the size of mine and now it's uh, a 10th of the size of mine. Difference being planted in this native unamended soil versus mine that's in living soil, heavily amended, wood chipped, and on micro sprayers instead of drip. So let's get you over to those other two trees and show you what those look like. All right guys, check this out. So this here is a black mission fig. You can see here, this is the original cutting. It had some branches. There's a little bit uh, coming out over here, but again, it's planted in crushed rock. Normally this bush here is trimmed and this guy's getting sun almost all day. Again, the sun comes up over there, so it's shining down on it. Then it goes overhead and sets over there. So normally 
that's got some pretty good sun on it, all right? This one was planted the exact same time as that Shangri-La over there, and you could see how teeny tiny it is. I'm sure a lot of you guys are growing figs, and you're looking at this going, my God, that thing's two years old? Yeah, it is. So, crushed rock, unamended soil. Let me pull some of this rock away, and you guys can see here. There's some roots and stuff in here, but this is just clay soil and crushed rock. Here's some roots right here. A little root right there. So we're going to do the same thing with this fig tree that we did with that Shangri-La mulberry. I'm not going to film that because it's just pointless, but uh, you saw the before. I'll do some updates when I do updates on the Shangri-La. I'll do them on this one also. Uh, next, I want to show you a Pakistan. All right, guys. So this is a uh, Pakistan mulberry. It's covered in fruit. This one was planted uh, this August will be three years. All right. It's got, uh, oh, I'd say probably uh, two and a quarter inch trunk. All right. As you can see, again, it, this is about 15 feet away from the uh, Black Mission fig you guys just saw. And probably about 30 feet, 35 feet away from that Shangri-La. Again... There's the sun, it's in full sun all day, and it really hasn't grown much. This thing should be four times this size. All right, so we're gonna pull away this little border thing here. This thing, we're gonna rake these rocks away, and we're gonna give this guy some love. Again, guys, I'm not gonna film that. Uh, I will show you updates on it, though. It is a healthy tree, only because it was planted, and it was a little bit bigger, and it got established a little easier, but I'm going to do updates on that, like I said, so you'll get updates on the Shangri-La, the Black Mission, and this guy. So over here, guys. This was a uh, air layer from my on apple tree. You can see it's uh, covered in flowers. Going to be getting fruit soon. This has been in the ground now for, uh, oh, I think I planted it probably about a year ago here. And we heavily, heavily amended this soil. All right, you can see all the leaves in here. This is all amended with composted cow poop. The same stuff I used on the Shangri-La and what I'm gonna use on the Black Mission in the Pakistan. And this guy's getting a ton of water. It does need these rocks raked back and it does need some wood chip mulch. So I'm gonna drop some of that off in a couple of weeks. Um, all these suckers growing out here, we're gonna air layer these and all these lower branches. And we're just gonna leave it from here that way it grows into a nice tree form. Over time, we're gonna trim off some of these taller, skinnier branches because what we are after is these guys here. These short little ones with the flowers at the end, these are fruiting spurs. This is what you want on your tree. So as the tree grows, all these branches sticking way out here, you wanna trim these off, keep it a tighter form and try to promote the growth of these. But this guy should uh, put out a ton of fruit this year more than they're uh, probably going to want to eat, but it's doing great. And that's because this was planted in amended ground with a lot of cow poop. And I think it did have wood chips on top at one point. Now it's just covered in leaves, but we're going to clean it up. So guys, I hope this helped you out. And uh, I'm sure you're going to love the updates. You know, this is how you bring trees back to life guys don't listen to anyone if they tell you just plop a tree in the ground and water it and throw some fertilizer on it once in a while don't all right amend the soil really good you need to test your soil when it comes to ph nitrogen phosphorus and potassium i did a video on how to do that super simple super cheap you guys will be addicted to it You'll be uh, plant gurus. All your plants are going to do great if you follow my guidelines. I guarantee it. So I'll put a link down in the description to that video. And you guys can check it out. Uh, I did a whole video series on how to grow tropicals or any other plant for that matter in our climate here. All right. So that would be the, the Phoenix metro area, the valley, or any climate that's similar to ours. All right. Uh, whether you're growing bananas, mangoes, it doesn't matter. Even if you're growing cactuses native trees everything's going to grow like a weed if you grow it my method all right my channel my method so <laughs> i 
I hope you like that video, guys. Uh, don't forget to leave a comment. Let me know what you guys think. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, share, hit the bell, tell all your friends. And until the next video, guys, keep growing.